Welcome to Moblox and our business as usual show. I'm Piers Linney, I'm the CEO and founder of Moblox. And we're building the tech and tools platform for owner-led businesses. It's a startup, it's a small business, it's somebody with ambitions to grow a business. Most small businesses understand they should be embracing technology and modern business tools, but they don't really know how to, and they're not getting the guidance that we once used to before the internet changed things and the cloud. So we're building a business to provide support, guidance, content, to help you make better purchasing decisions. And we're also going to be launching our own services. Some uh, we've been working very hard on them over the last sort of year. Uh, some core services for small businesses. We want to change the game and disrupt the small business services market. So it's a challenge um, to be a disruptor like that, but that's what we aim to do. So we'll talk a bit more about Mobox later and we'll go through some of our content. Now, in today's show, uh, we're going to cover Quite a few things. We try and keep these things uh, short and sweet, but pack a lot in. Uh, I'm going to go for a bit about what's hot in the news um, in terms of what's impacting small businesses. And we also have a special guest in, which is um, Kim Leary. So we're going to talk about, you know, women in technology. Uh, Kim's also the, the chairperson or chair lady <laughs> of uh, Birmingham yes. Tech Week. <laughs> Um, she, her business is uh, in digital marketing and she has used a lot of technology, works lots of small companies and we're going to talk about some of her tips for going digital as well. But you know, before we jump in, I wanted to share one other thing which is very important. I've got Sophia over there. I've got to mention the community. Now, we're launching the community. Um, it may be up and running by the time you get to see this. And this is key to Moblox. This is something that is really core to what we do. We want to build a community of small business owners so that you can engage with us clearly, provide us feedback. We're not just building things and hope you hope that you come. We want to build things that you actually want in the way you actually want them built. So that, that's part of why we've got the community. But also you can engage with each other and support each other, share your experiences. You know, we all know that in business it can be lonely at the top. And if you're a sole trader, which 75% of the UK, 6 million small businesses are, then, you know, it's great to be able to reach out to people who you know, are experiencing going through the things that you are as well. So let's look at this uh, article here. This is on um, the BBC News. So living costs are rising at their fastest rate for 30 years. If you're a small business, you potentially got the perfect storm because your living costs are going up, the cost of buying anything, but also often your input costs into your business are going up or your labor costs or even your energy costs, You know, especially after what's happened recently in, in, the, in the Ukraine. But um, so your income is being squeezed. You might not be able to pass on these, these, these cost rises to your customers because who knows whether they can afford it. They're being squeezed. So your income is being squeezed and the cost of living is going up. So actually it's a hard, I think it's probably harder for small business owners than anybody else. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. I mean, I think um, it's, it, it hits you in the shops, it hits you in retail, um, but it, it's also, yeah, your kind of your electricity bills. Um, some people's bills are doubling. I mean, it's crazy. My advice is, is that, you know, there comes a point where you, you can't absorb um, cost increases too much. You know, if you've got a business where you do have, you know, cost of sales, cost of goods sold, inputs, essentially, as opposed to just people, is that there comes a point where you have to start thinking about how you pass that on. And that then you may have to ask yourself about how do you then differentiate your product more? Because it can't just be about price. You've got to be something else you can try and add in terms of value for the customer. So, you know, you don't, you can actually pass on those cost increases. This one surprised me. This is on smallbusiness.co.uk. Micro businesses feel especially excluded from government, the government help to grow scheme. Now, when this came out, which is on paper, a good idea. The thing that I didn't quite grasp is that if you've got less than five people, you employ less than five people, you're not eligible. Yes. So that's about 80 to 85, not an exact number, 80 to 85% of UK small businesses. I think that's the uh, the biggest challenge with with support from the government. They are um, it doesn't support the the kind of the sole traders and the small um, micro businesses. It's always either geared towards larger corporates or kind of the the medium enterprises. Well, they they fall through the cracks. I was on the board yeah. of um, British Business Bank during when, you know when the bounce back loan scheme came out. Uh -huh. So there's a bit of blowback about that, about fraud. But you know yeah. it was everyone was fully aware at the time that that was highly likely. But, you know, what was the alternative? You, you try and credit check everybody 
that meant that you know you'd, you'd see much less support that actually was that got out of the door very very quickly and i think that's the thing i think particularly business a lot of businesses are quite cash rich at the moment if they haven't used their bounce back there's a lot of businesses that have got quite a lot of um cash within their company certainly a lot of the agency reports that i've seen um typically an agency might have three months buffer and now it's kind of six months because they've taken use of the, the bounce back loans um but obviously we've, we've got to pay that back and it's it's gonna impact us at some point along the way so um i can well understand the fraud's implications on it well you've got those people who have those payments they might have four years paying back their energy uh support essentially which is another loan if basically yeah. um so you know things are going to get um quite difficult for a lot of people i think especially the most the vulnerable and all of these things you know and we're looking at national insurance going up and all these things all they really do at the end of the day is the impact the people they're not progressive taxation it, it helps it impacts the people of the poorest or the most vulnerable and as i think that small businesses and this is what mobox is also trying to do um is to support and champion them that they fall through the cracks yeah yeah i agree i mean i think the the other the other side of that is somebody has to pay the bill um, and it's it's not um, well, yeah. Where's the money going to come from? Well, so my view on that is is that, and I was saying this on TV last week, is that if you've got a static economy, which we kind of have, everyone's saying, oh, it's growing fast now, but it's from a very low base. We're still not where we were in 2019. So if you've got a static economy, then yeah, you're right. The pie is only so big. The only way out of it is to increase the size of the pie. So it's growth. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. you know as well as I do, because that's what we do all day, is that small businesses employing people there that's where the growth is it's not big companies you know, that their their end is coming essentially as the world changes and especially technology is accelerating that growth means the pie is bigger so even if taxation is the same there's more to go there's more to go around yeah no completely agree um and i think that's it's part of the problem with uh, small businesses i don't think that uh, small business owners often realize the impact that they actually do have on the economy and that it's far greater than uh, and what they're led to believe. 60% of private sector employment, half of GDP, and that's only going in one direction. Yeah. Um, so this is this is uh, the Mobox website. So what we've launched to date so far is our sort of content, is a bit about us, and in the content we have different sections, sales, we're going to merge some of these, sales, finance, legal, tech, customers, small business news, well-being, people, marketing. Um, and we've got, Articles here, some are sort of beginner level articles. They're written slightly differently to articles that are more sort of intermediate. And eventually we'll have experts as well. And eventually over time, we're going to build this into having a platform where it's kind of free content, but also eventually there'll be content which is sort of premium um, expert content as well. So if you haven't joined Moblox yet or seen the website, then, um, you know, please go and go and go and have a look. But now let's get over, more importantly, uh, Kim's come all the way down to see us from Tamworth. So let's talk about you and Scribble because you're um, you're definitely um, very interesting in terms of the amount of things you're involved in, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and also it's great to I think actually we've done three of these because we're kind of gearing up to really motoring on this stuff. Yeah. I think all of our guests have been women <laughs> so far. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wonder if it was intentional or. <laughs> so, no, so it's great to see someone that's involved in the tech scene. It's great to see someone that's a, the regional tech scene. We're talking about leveling up. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, you're obviously a female and you're involved in uh, your own business and I'm sure others as well. So tell us a bit about you and how you how you got to where the heady heights of where you are. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think essentially I graduated in 2008. Um, markets had crashed, jobs had gone. Marketing was one of those first kind of sectors that got hit quite hard. Um, what did you study then? Printed textiles. Uh, okay. <laughs> So you're creative, um, you yeah, creative, really, right? yeah, really creative. But um, you know, what good does a textiles degree do when the markets are crashing and kind of um, business is imploding? It, it wasn't, I think, um, a useful degree at that point. Um, so a lot of the the stuff that I kind of wanted to get into, they just it just it didn't exist. It was taken. They went. But you, you weren't teams. thinking then. Oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to go into business. No. Not at all, no. Not at all. No, no, no. Um, I think that really came about because there just weren't the opportunities. Um, so I'd graduated. Um, I'd gone into kind of retail work, um, account management. And at one point I was freelancing, building my portfolio, applying for jobs, which is a full-time job in itself, and working full-time. Um, and I was kind of said to at the time, you know, Kim, you've got to make a decision on what you're doing. You can't be doing three things all at the same time make a decision if you're gonna 
you know, kind of start growing your portfolio and continue freelancing, then become a freelancer and do it. Take the leap of faith. Um, and I won a contract. How, how techy or digital were you then? Massive. No, but I, were you there? Were you, were you digital native or was it? Yeah, because yeah. I kind of started when Twitter was still, I mean, I think there was like, I don't know, 35, 35 million tweets a day then and it's I think a lot more than that now 35,000 I can't remember but the and textile design was all done in software I guess by this point so um software it was all no it was all done by hand oh. but my so I did I went to Loughborough University and they'd they were one of the first universities to have a digital printer so I loved using digital printer all of my work was digital um I was told quite a number of times that I was on the wrong course and that I shouldn't have been doing printed textiles because my work was quite bold and quite graphic and that I should have done graphic design, which is what I went to do. I just do it. So how did you then transition into starting a business then? Uh, because when I was applying for jobs, I kept getting the same feedback. You need more experience. What, no? Yeah, no, <laughs> well, you need more experience. Right, okay. yeah. um, <laughs> and I wanted to go at that point into graphic design, yeah. um, but there, there just wasn't, I just couldn't get, I just couldn't get the opportunity. I just couldn't get somebody to just take a chance on me. Um, and so that's why I started to build my portfolio um, and build up um, friends and family work and kind of grew. But what were you doing there? there? What was the initial work you were doing for them? Um, so initially it was like logo designs, flyers, leaflets. That's it, yeah, um, creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah quite creative um, using, yeah, kind of all the Adobe suite tools. So Photoshop, Illustrator and, um, and eventually uh, I was employed as an account manager, but I knew that I could build them a website. Because I thought at the time the quotes they were getting were quite high and I was like, oh no, I can I can do this. I can figure it out for you. If I do it, I'll save you some money. If I don't, then you know, you've, not, you've not lost anything. Um, so, so, you, so you started Scribble in 2010. Yeah. But so what to do in basically front-end design web? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and because I um, kind of entered the market in quite a turbulent time, it meant that I was able to undercut a lot of the, the larger companies. And what was your market? Was it national or was it regional? Was it Birmingham? Uh, actually, because of Twitter, it was national. Okay. And it was global. I mean, I had clients in Abu Dhabi, America, uh, Europe. That's France. the beauty of uh, technology Digital. and the internet and, you know, being yeah. able to run a business these yeah, days. Yeah, absolutely. But as a single person, um, time zones were a nightmare. Working with the American market, you know, when you're on your own, is a lot of work to do when you're servicing kind of UK and America. It was Especially West up. Coast. I've yeah. been there. It's a nightmare. Yeah. So how would you, where's Scribble today then? Scribble today is a team of six um, based in Birmingham. Um, yeah, again, wasn't what I set out to do. So everything has been self-taught. I've read it or I've you know kind of researched it, done it through just doing. Um, or YouTube videos. Or YouTube That's what I seem to spend. I'll tell you what, yeah, Google. YouTube shorts are becoming too addictive. I need to stop doing those. But I, I yeah. learned so much, like Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro. Yeah. I learned to, do, to use that on uh, YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Um, Google was my best friend, self taught in coding, um, self taught in all the kind of platforms and programs, um, just to, just because I loved it and I really just wanted to do more of it. Um, so you're also the chairperson of Birmingham Tech Week, which is actually where I met you. Yes. That was a keynote at the at the awards dinner, uh, which was quite interesting. I was also, but maybe something you can touch upon. I was quite surprised at the, the diversity of the audience as well. So how did that come about? Or is that, is that marketing for Scribble? Is that, well, uh, it probably goes, helps you, I've no yeah, doubt. Yeah, it goes hand in hand. I mean, Birmingham Tech Week um, was was set up with the, the very clear idea of showcasing um, tech companies in Birmingham. Birmingham is an awesome city, but it's not very good at promoting itself. And so Birmingham Tech Week was about shining a spotlight and celebrating the companies and their achievements within the city. Um, it's also about kind of collaborating and, and working together and, and showing that we can do more if we, if we do just open our, kind of our arms and our doors and say, let's, let's work together. And, and do you find, you know, we're talking about you know, a lot of the, you know, the, the levelling up is the phrase of the moment. Um, and have you found it in Birmingham? Because I, I did a, a Mo, the Moblox van tour. So I was sort of a, going around the UK, meeting lots of entrepreneurs around the country. It was very interesting in their experience of access to capital, network, talent. Um, you know, there was Glasgow, Newcastle, Manchester. I didn't get to Birmingham actually because I got COVID. <laughs> um, but um, it was, so how have you found it in the Birmingham region? I know you, you're sort of national, even international. But did you see that issue there at the time? Yeah, absolutely. So I think Birmingham um, 
it, it, it doesn't tend to get the eyes of the investors. Um, obviously, it's very heavily focused on London, Oxford, because of the, um, the medical facilities in Oxford. Um, up north, Bristol, um, tend to get more funding than Birmingham. So again, it's, it's that whole piece of encouraging investors to have a look at Birmingham and to see what other tech companies are available. I always say that um, ambition is evenly, reasonably evenly distributed. Capital networks isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the funding for Birmingham businesses tends to come within. It doesn't come from outside of Birmingham. And I, I've been to lots of events through my, I've been in tech for quite a lot, well, enterprise tech, most of it. But I will say technology to me, and I've been on the board of Tech UK and all sorts of things, is male, pale and stale. Um, I know diversity is important to you. I, I'm on the board of, um, well, the Diversity Advisory Council of Sky, so it's important to me. But you're very focused on women in tech, aren't you? Yeah, for me, um, women in tech is is an important conversation to have. Um, and I think particularly through Birmingham Tech Week, a lot of the work that we do is to make sure that we are you know, consciously considering our panels, our speakers, to make sure that we, we are offering a diverse range of, of speakers. Um, and I think that particularly within um, tech, it it's very easy to to just you know kind of use the same speakers um and and so really it's about encouraging people to look outside of who they usually uh, so do you see so if you all your clients are probably small businesses to quite large businesses as your business evolves so do you see that technology is implemented by a be careful what i say here, <laughs> male or female entrepreneurs because of a lack of understanding or access or support or uh, it's a good question. So typically we tend to work with um, marketeers yeah. and Squibble. Um, and it's it's often it's often fear and lack of time. So they are very open to adopting new technologies, um, but they are also conscious about the amount of time that it might take them to set something up, to trial it, to get the team involved in it. Usually they've got... You know, marketing execs below them who they also have to onboard and then the wider company and the wider team so adopting tech um i don't know if it would necessarily be a male female split but it's more the the problem is more about people having and, time and how do you see you know how do you get more women into i know they can go back to you know teaching my i've got two daughters you know about stem and but in the nearer term though, how do they get more women into tech don't think there is a short-term solution. It's 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 long-term. I've got two girls as well, and for me, it it starts at home. It's conversations you have at home, and it starts in school and having the role models. I mean, if I think back to my science teacher, you mentioned STEM. My science teacher is not a role model for me, um, and I think that's what that's what girls need to see. It's not um, it's not the subject matter itself. It's actually if I study this, if I go into coding, what can I get from it? What can I achieve? It's not just um, how can we get more uh, women into it? It's what will they achieve by doing it um, and kind of inspiring people through, through that. But you're way. quite a role model, aren't you? So in terms of you know, you're running a business, you're building a business, you know, you're the, the chair lady of our chairperson of Birmingham <laughs> Tech Week. Um, you know, there aren't many Kims kicking around, to be honest with you. No, but... Uh, I don't oh, know. Which I is struggle. not, yeah. there should be. I know, I struggle with it and people do ask me. Um, but for me, I, I haven't ever, I've never used being a woman as a, a, a reason not to do it. Um, well, I, geez, I, I found in my career that um, um, it's changed since then, but I've moved on. But I never really met myself, especially in the city, I started in the city. Yeah. I never met another young professional um, in terms of investment banking, um, someone with Caribbean heritage. It just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I've not really. Would you find if you find more women in terms of your engaging with in, in your in your network and your circle, or is it still all men running tech companies? It's, it's mostly men. Is it? It's mostly men. But I've used that to my advantage because I think I stand out different. I'm different. So naturally, you know, I've done a huge amount of networking. Um, and if I went into a room full of men, then I would use it to my advantage because I was the only woman. Um, so you're, you've you got a family, so you've got yeah. two daughters. Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a mum, obviously. So how do you balance, uh, I was doing a post um, recently on LinkedIn about you know being on holiday and trying to get some time off. And, and actually, I think it was us that you were supposed to be on the call. Oh, was it? <laughs> oh, right, yeah. I couldn't do them all, that's the thing. No, so we, we did do it, but yeah, I did think it is hard. But how do you find, you know, being a mum, 
um, I don't know, I don't know, get too personal, your partner and school runs and all this kind of stuff. How do you how do you balance that with the work? Because building a business can be you know utterly you know utterly time consuming. Um, so I have a mantra. Um, if I say yes to one thing, I'm saying no to something else. All right. So you you do you manage your time or your energy yeah. at least uh, quite carefully. Manage all of it. So if I'm going to commit to something, so the three roles that I have at the moment, I said yes to them knowing that I had the time for them. Anything more than that, and I can't, I can't do it. So I'm very clear from the start. Yes, I can do this. I could give you an hour a month or whatever it is. Um, so you mentioned three roles, actually. I've got another one here. So downtown for business. Yes. So explain that one. That's So downtown in business is a, a networking group um, that's nationwide across the UK. Came to Birmingham in 2016. Uh, and, and who's it helping to network? So small business owners. Um, yeah, so across the city. Um, I really, really like it because we go for a nice lunch, have a glass of wine. It's a chance to get out of the office and have a different conversation, you know, learning from other people, learning what's going on in the city or just what other people are experiencing. Um, and it tends to be you know, a kind of a closed conversation between maybe 15, 20 people. Um, so you're, um, um, so you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're in marketing, let's face it, you know, one of the, one of the, the key challenges for anyone in business is uh, sales and marketing. Yeah. So let's talk about some top tips without, without giving anything anyone should pay you for away. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what do you, you know, you're a small business, you know, it's how do you sell stuff? You know, the thing, as we, as we talked about earlier, things are getting harder. You're, you're, Customers might be squeezed. You might be squeezed. Disposable income is probably going the wrong direction. You know, so it actually becomes really about your product, obviously. But sales and marketing is probably the number one topic, maybe apart from uh, finance as well. Probably finance, yeah. sales and marketing, two top subjects. Any top tips? Yeah, so for me, um, <laughs> and this is why I got into uh, marketing and design in the very first place, it's because when you... Um, when you start a business, when you create a product, when you do anything, it exists, but it doesn't necessarily have any value until you can put the identity around it. And for me, design, particularly graphic design, you add value. You know, you could take a product, you see it all the time with um, bottles of shampoo. You know, you put one in a luxurious bottle and you put one in uh, a, an economy bottle. Which one are you going to gravitate towards, depending on what you want? You most likely choose the luxurious bottle because of the way it's been designed and the feelings that's that's what design creates that's the value piece um and i think within sales and marketing the there is no silver bullet like it takes time and it takes a lot of work and research the only the only thing that i can say is invest in researching your target audience make sure you know what they have for breakfast what they do through the day what times they check their emails you know just absolutely immerse yourself in their world um, because if you know them and you know their problems you know what keeps them up at night then you can tailor your product to their exact problem and, then and, and this is um, um my partner nicola she did a went back to university did a, a course in business and marketing yeah. um she got a first to be fair so we've got a better degree than i have now and um but i, I was reading her coursework about marketing and a lot of this stuff i kind of knew through osmosis but you know, a lot of it is it, it's it's marketing 101. I mean, even yeah. reading a decent book about marketing strategies, know your customer, you know, understand their personas, fit your it's product market fit, you know, yeah. involve your product to matter, talk to them. And uh, this is all very basic that people forget it's forget really about. It's really basic, it's really basic stuff. But I think people jump straight in and they're like, we need the big flashy website, you know. Of course you do, but actually you can't do any of that until you know who you're talking to. And also branding. So you don't you don't need to go and spend you know ten to thousand pounds on some branding agency, but understanding your your brand and why you exist and who you are trying to communicate with. Yeah. And I think that's something that's really it's not a logo. No, it's not a logo. And I think that's why you have, you know, a lot of influencers on Instagram who do really, really well. They do really well because they are talking and engaging with their audiences and they build a brand off the back of that. Um, so any more top tips any more mistakes you see people cause uh, that's one of the reasons I, I made a course actually which is free if you join Mailbox, we'll give you for free but well, it's called Startup with Piers Lenny it's actually for anyone who's starting a business or growing a new business and uh, it nearly killed me to be honest with you but it's about 76 lessons 10 and a half hours and it's everything from what should your legal structure be 
all the way through to the basics in marketing and finance as well. So usually what you did cost it a £200, but we're giving it away for free if you join Moblox. So please sign up to Moblox and the community and you'll get a link to get free access to that course. It was because I just see people making the same mistakes over and over again. Yeah, I've got I've got a couple. So my first one is to absolutely invest as much as you can in decent photography because photographs will see you through. You can use them on all of your marketing, you can use them on your website. And then it means that you don't ever have to use horrible, um, yeah, stereotypical um, stock imagery. Can't stand it on a website. Yeah, I'll struggle. We have a bit of that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, it's I'm always it's shouting right. about it. <laughs> but it's the headsets. It, you know, when you say contact us and people have got the headsets on for the call. Oh, right. It's that kind of stuff that's like just... Get right, some, that's get the top some tip. Pictures. We were looking at one of those the other day <laughs> <laughs> for our, for our, our <laughs> chat bot. Um, so we'll probably kill that. So we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up. We'll keep this short and sweet. So um, we've got some shelves here. My notice it behind me. It's still looking uh, quite empty. And I, I'm going to be reaching out to small business owners to send us your product. And we're going to sort of put it on there. Might even talk. So actually, send us your product as long as it's not you know, a car, well, send me a car if you want, but not too big, and maybe a little bit about it, and we'll put it on the shelves, and maybe just to talk to it. So we want to sort of showcase some products and small businesses and, and your story as well. Also, we're still running our competition, which is a uh, pitch to peers. So we're looking for five people. We're going to pick out um, of the entries that get to pitch to me, and the, the winner wins £10,000, which, uh, you know, is not an insignificant amount of money at all. And that's a grant, don't worry, there's no strings attached. I don't want 30% of your business, nothing like that. So that's that's still running as well. And also, you know, we are going to be launching a community in not too distant future, if it's not launched already by the time you see this. And you know, we want you to engage in the community and talk to us about, you know, what, what do you want us to do? This is not, you know, this format is not fixed. We're just sort of trying things. We're doing podcasts, we're going to do this show as well. But we're going to be bringing people in um, into the into the show, into the studio, onto um, onto the screen as well. And please don't forget to sign up to Moblox. Uh, we're now signing up founder members, so they're the people that we're going to be engaging with, the people that are going to get uh, special offers on our services. And these are going to be services that you that we all use our initial services. So there's definitely some value there. And I also want to clearly thank Kim for making the journey down from Tamworth today. Um, and it's been great working with you actually. So, you know, Thank Moblox you. again, we are, were saying earlier, we were just chatting that we want our supply chain into far as possible, not always the case, because we've got some big uh, partners to be small businesses and people like yourselves that uh, we can work with and build relations with and help grow as well. So oh, thank you. Thank you for coming down today. And uh, as ever, thanks for joining us on uh, Business As Usual, because as we all know, business never is usual. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.